with us. We do not take that responsibility lightly. Okay? Ladies, this is a sport we play, but I tell you, it's much more than that. The life lessons we learn through this game are awesome if you open your mind to it. You know what I love about it? I'm five foot four, I've had teammates that are six foot four. I can't do what she can do, but she can't do what I can do. <laughs> right? Those times you have your individual moments, right? You got the bat in your hand, and it's you, baby. I want you to learn to step up the plate and say, seriously, you want to pitch to me? Come on, bring it on, let's dance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? If you want to be out in the field, say, check me out. Pitchers, you got the best game because it's a lot about you in the circle. And they love it. And we love you too. But let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a five-time world champion in the United States of America. A five-time world champion. I'm a two-time Olympic gold medalist. I'm a 16-time ASA All-American. I'm a 15-time national champion. I'm a one-time NCAA national champion. I'm a four-time collegiate All-American. And I'm the NCAA player of the decade for the 80s. And I know that you are not going to. But it's history. Do you want to make history? That's the question. Liberty University? Never heard of the school. Kind of a little bit. Never heard of Liberty Softball. Next thing you know, I'm asking the Lord, how can I serve you more? Next day, I get a phone call from the athletic director here at Liberty University, Jeff Barber. And what happens? He tells me the coach has retired. They're looking for a coach who can take this program to the next level. My question, are you a player that can take this program to the next level? God bless you. He said two important things to me. One, this is the largest Christian university in the world. Watch what you pray for. <laughs> the next thing he said is, when I told him I've never had coached in college before, you know that, right? I've assistant coached a little bit. I'm North Big Surgeon, you guys, by trade. And he said, we know that, but we feel the Lord is bringing us to you. Never underestimate the power, the power of the prayers. To start this off, what we want to do, besides welcome you, is to tell you what we look for. And the first thing when it says student athlete, what's the first part of that phrase? I would love to introduce to you our personal, for the sport of softball here at Liberty, academic coordinator. She is in charge of all of that for you. If you play for us here at Liberty, you'll be meeting Miss Jessalyn. Baby yes, boy, come in soon. <laughs> Jess, why don't you tell them a little bit about academics? Yes, as far as um, academics, just a little background, just for you guys. Obviously, you guys are out here. You're obviously interested in going to college, playing the sport in college. Just want to make sure that you guys are up to date on things that you need to know as far as leaving high school and to get to that level of college academics. Make sure you guys are meeting with your um, school counselors. Make sure that you guys are taking the core courses that you have to have to be eligible to
guys are trying to senior year trying to get into college somewhere. You have don't take the SAT until that summer, and for some reason your the sliding scale doesn't match up and you're not a qualifier. What's the sliding scale? Sliding GPA, SAT scores. In order to get admitted to certain colleges, you have to have a certain level. You got to be above that line. If you have a high GPA, 4.0, right? And you have a low test score, they can slide and balance each other. So if you say, I'm not a test taker. But if you're a great test, you know someone who just emailed us had a 1925 on her SAT. Oh. So what's the important about a high GPA and a high test score? You get in, but also what else? Money. This will give you money. Yeah, so ladies, just be aware of all of that. If you have questions, you can find me. I will give you some information. But you know, those are things that you guys need to start looking at now so you don't get into a position where you have the opportunity to play when you get out of high school and go to a college and you can't. Okay? So just make sure you're aware of what you need. Um, also, in my role here at Liberty, basically in a lot of universities have this role, but my job here at Liberty is to make sure the girls are eligible to compete in the classroom as well as on the field. So I meet with them once a week. Uh, they have study hall where they have to come in and have a certain amount of hours. Usually it's eight when they come in with ball as freshmen. They have to have eight hours of study hall during the week to make sure that they're getting their assignments done. Uh, we make their schedules together to make sure that they're meeting progress towards degrees. So every year they have to have a certain amount of credit hours to be eligible to play out here. So lots of pieces that go into college and uh, softball and academics. So um, there is somebody there when you get to college that can help you and assist you and you know be there to answer questions, and help tutor in and things like that. So just be aware. Do you guys have any questions for me? Nope. What about they get tutors? Yeah. As a student athlete, right? You get to choose your student. classes first, right? Yes. Yeah. You have priority registration as a student. Liberty. So when you guys come in to register, you get the classes, the times, the professors, the labs, whatever you need first. So you're not battling the time. Obviously, as softball players in the spring, you guys would be traveling all the time, so you're going to miss a lot of class. So clearly, my job is to make sure that we're taking the harder classes in the fall, so that in the spring, when you're traveling, you guys aren't missing all those labs or math classes or English classes or whatever it is that you might struggle with academically. We'll plan that out and make sure that you guys have the schedule that's going to help you be the most successful. We have over 35 tutors and variety of different subjects here at Liberty that our student athletes can go and meet with. They just say, hey, Jess, I'm really struggling in this class. Can you get your tutor? And the next day, we've got them set up with a, with a tutor to help with that subject. So, so many things here at Liberty put in place to help our student athletes be successful. As far as you know, laptop computers our athletes can check out, Headphones, we don't have Dr. Gray's beats, like you tell everybody, we don't have headphones. Um, calculators, anything they need, they can come check out from us and have to go with their athletics here at Liberty and, and get what they need to be successful. How about online we choices have, too, right? Yes, and what's really neat about Liberty is the fact that we have online classes. Um, so basically, you know, it's not just residential, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday classes. They can knock out courses online that are only taking so you take 15 hours, you might only be in 12 at a time because you took an eight week online class. I know that gets a little confusing, but basically we're able to do so much with our student athletes as far as getting classes done and getting them progress to graduate in four years instead of sometimes you hear it might take five. Here at Liberty, our student athletes graduate at a higher rate of student body, and a lot of them graduate in three and a half years to start a master's. Uh, it's because we're, we're able to get you guys in at least 15, 18 credit hours a semester without ever being in 18 at a time with our online system. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we're not taking anatomy and physiology online. It's going to be a general course requirements, so maybe a Bible class or something like that. So a lot of cool things with the way we're able to set up our student outreach schedule to help them get any degree they want. Obviously, when they, you guys come in as freshmen, we would sit you down and say, what are your goals academically? We know what you want on the field, but where do you want to go academically? Do you want to go um, to PT school? Do you want to go to grad school somewhere? What, what do you want? Do you want to get a master's while you're here? And we'll map you out for four years to make sure that that's possible. 
if that's your goal. Okay, uh, Liberty Softball, how do we do GPA wise? Liberty Softball GPA, let's just say uh, with this coaching staff here for the first year, uh, we changed a lot of things. Uh, we sat down and said, you know, what are our goals academically? Where do we want the team to be? We had them in eight hours of action because we taught active to be a positive skill. But, I was <laughs> uh, but we had the girls in, uh, in study hall eight hours a week and actually had them as a team so that they were keeping each other accountable. And we had, um, obviously, uh, one of the grad assistants was in there with them in the evenings. They had the second highest GPA for the year here at Liberty. And that was behind Vince Tennis, who has seven people in here. So wow. he's by us. See, so he likes not fair, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they wanted two players. They instead. had a 3.58 cumulative GPA as a <gasps> which That's is great. Uh, it's awesome. Um, they're also up for a, a bunch of awards that they can possibly win through the NCAA with that GPA. So really cool things happen here academically as well as athletically. And definitely academics is uh, definitely a high priority here with this coaching staff and uh, just at Liberty. Thank you, Jess. Any questions? Now, I know it's hot, but I want to do this because those of you that were in the Pitcher Catcher Specialty Camp gives you time for your lunch to digest, okay? Don't worry about it, we'll get it out there. But there's, these are important things I want parents to hear as well in regards to recruiting. Some of you may not know this, all right? As a coaching staff, we cannot talk to you, a lot of you, until you get past July 1st, heading into the summer, heading into your senior year. Does everybody know that? But some parents don't know that. So a lot of my friends coach, right? And I've heard some parents during a recruiting you know, showcase, they go up to the coach and go, man, see, that's my daughter. It's your kitchen. She's good. <laughs> right? She loves to go to live with here, here. Of course, I went to the coach again, so they say, oh, she'd love to go to UCLA. Well, what happens? The coach can't talk to them because it's illegal. They'll get written up. So the parent leaves and says, that coach is stuck up. She wouldn't even talk to me. There's no way my daughter's going to go to UCLA. But she cannot talk to your daughter, okay? There's a lot of rules. So why do we like to do camps? Because I can talk to you. It doesn't matter how old you are. And the other thing is you can meet us, right? You can meet some of our players. In the fall, you can meet all of our players. The other thing is you can see the university. We can see your skills. Because when you go and keep playing games, you know how many games are played in Colorado? Anyone gone to Colorado showcases? There are so many games. There's no way that you're going to see it every day. So you got to stand out. And how do you stand out? In a camp. You know schools you want to go to? Go to their camp. The other thing is, ladies, you have got to grow up right now. Grow up because realize your life is meant to be prosperous. And it will be. It's biblical. What does that mean? You might think you're supposed to be here, but the Lord's got you over here, and that's where you're meant to be. Some of you, you'll apply, and you'll get a rejection letter. That doesn't mean you're a reject. But you feel it is. Oh, I'm failing. I'm not. No. You're going to be exactly where you're meant to be. And it's going to happen how? In recruiting. I'm going through it now. Someone recruited four first basemen for Liberty. And all they can do is play first. Am I going to look for a first baseman for two years? Maybe not. If you're better than those first basemen, oh yeah. But if you're as the same, it's very difficult. You know what I mean? So realize that. You always have, there is always a school for all of you. You've got to go get it. If you think it's just going to happen, no, you've got to go. Now, are there any questions for recruiting that I can help you with? How do you do it? Camps and clinics to get out there. The other thing is to send email. Send video. But an, an easy thing. All you have to do is get your iPhones, mom and dad, and do, oh, here she is hitting. Oh, she got a hit. Good. I'm going to send it off to her. Right? But when you send it off, send it individually. Don't send collectively to six schools. You know, just, you know. Oh, she wants to be a Bruno. Oh, she wants to be a Lady Flame. Oh, you know. But individually. All right? If you want to know a little bit about Liberty, why is it called Liberty University in 2 Corinthians? 
317, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Why the, the flames? Okay? Eternal flame, flames. In Psalms 104.4, it says that he makes wind his messengers and flames of fire his servants. Right? Our mascot is the eagle. Why I like it? Okay? All right? Uh, the other thing is softball already is exponentially here just soaring. No pun intended with the eagle, soaring. I was asked to come here to bring the program to the next level. If you can see yourself on ESPN winning a World Series, that's what I'm looking for. The other thing is too, I wanted to build a brand new softball stadium. Guess what? They wanted me to design it, and I did. I got almost everything. There's like four things missing I want. But we have an $8.5 million softball stadium. So right now the road's closed, but it might be opened up by the end of the week. But all you can do is go where baseball is, go in the parking lot, go to the farthest area, and you'll look down and see Field. I got artificial turf all the way around it. Infield is dirt. Why is the infield dirt? In order to host postseason play, you have to have dirt in the infield right now. So that tells you what I'm looking for. Right? What do I look for out here? Ladies, what's the difference from a prospect and what we just did with pitching? There'll be instruction, but also there'll be more game situations. We're going to get you guys fielding more, running more, playing against other, all that great stuff. Okay? So the whole thing is take a deep breath. Have a great time. What do I love? I love speed. I love power. If you don't have speed but you have power, that's okay. <laughs> if you don't have power, no speed, that's tough. Right? <laughs> I love strong arms. So when we talk about how to throw, if you don't throw that way, I recommend to try and throw that way. Okay? Everyone tells you this, dot with hitting. Listen, I was your leadoff batter for the United States of America from 1979 to 2000. God bless you. So what does that mean? I know how to hit. I know how to hit. Was I the fastest runner in the world? No. Was I fast? Yeah. But I know how to hit the ball. When I put a bunt down to run it out and I got out, what did my coach tell me? What are you doing bunting for? knows I can hit. You see what I mean? There's nothing wrong with bunting. I'm sharing that with you just so you know. When I'm sharing with you the secret <coughs> of my success, it's hopefully to do that. Okay? So keep an open mind. All right? Any questions? Parents, any questions? What is our coaching style? I coach the way I want it to teach. Can you make an error on that field? I pray that I never make you would I get disappointed? You can control your attitude and your effort. Needs. That's what disappoints me when you don't give me everything you got. Right? You decide if you're walking on and off that field or running on and off that field. You decide when things are tough, like you've walked two in a row, if you're going to bear down and get this batter. You decide on a hot day if you're going to be hot. and shares with you a rumor about your teammate or coaches, you say, I don't want to hear it. Get away. Or, oh, really? Really? Oh, and then you tell someone else. And oh, oh. Listen, I will make it perfectly clear. If you ever play for me, and you're a cancer to the team, that means you do not have your mission of lifting up your teammate. If you're a cancer to the team, I will remind you, I am a surgeon and I will cut you out. <laughs> I do have a problem when you're a great person to cut you out, it won't happen. But if you're a problem, I will. Okay? And I'm sure other coaches. At Liberty, there's no drinking. There's no alcohol. No promiscuous sex. There's curfew at midnight and on weekends, 1230. If you have a problem with that, Liberty's not for you. But guess what? If I coach in a secular school, it'd be the same rules. Why? Ladies, it's time to grow up. You are a professional. You may not be getting paid, but guess what? 
When you play out a Division I level or even another division in college, you are getting paid. Even if you're not on scholarship. Why? You get on a bus or a flight and you fly somewhere. You get meals when you're with a team. You get a uniform that costs a lot of money. But beyond that, you want to be a professional in life, don't you? You want to walk tall. So look at what God's given me. I'm excited about it. And instead, some of you want to be like someone else. No. Right? I mean, you don't want to be like someone else. You might look at someone else and say, I like that, but I don't like that. But I like that, I like that. And incorporate into who you are. I'm trying so hard and I pray every day that I coach like Jesus would coach. I know I'm far from it. But I want to try to be like that. Because I know if you step on that field and you feel him, you're going to, I just, I'm freaking out right now because if you ever played in a game, you just surprise yourself. You know what I mean? This is going to last a little lecture before I get you out there. Check this out. I want you to try to be one with the ball. And some of you might have heard this, but I want to remind you, the first national championship I ever played for, Houston, Texas, and I'm in short season. The balls hit two the legs of my third base. I run over backhand, throw the girl out of first. I'm at shortstop. Another batter hits a ground ball in the five, six hole. I dive, get the ground ball in front of my knee, gun the ball, gun, cannon, woo! Right to first base, never done it since. <laughs> a line drive is hit in the five, six hole. I run over, dive, horizontal to the ground, right? Shortstop, you do a, a ball is hit to six feet to the second base side of second. I get the ball as a shortstop before it hits the ground and throw the ball out of first. A runner's on first base. The ball's hit six feet to second. I run, I dive, get the ball in my glove, drag my right foot for the force out. Pitcher releases the ball, ball's hit over her glove. I run in, I dive, catch the ball an inch before I hit the ground. I hit like a 480 for that tournament. We won the national championship. I was selected MVP. I was first team All-American. I selected best offensive player. And I was selected best defensive player. What is the most amazing thing that I just shared with you? I remember. I remember. When you're one with the ball, I want you right now to start feeling the game. What does it sound like? What does it feel like? <laughs> I'll teach you how to hit and how to field and how to throw. And you're going to get out there and play. But when you're here and when you're gone, I want you to feel the game. Have you ever ripped the cover off the ball hitting? Do you swear the ball stopped and was on a silver platter or said, hit me? <laughs> <laughs> and then you rotated it as fast as you could and you saw it even though they say scientifically it's impossible, you saw it off the barrel of your back. And it felt so awesome. You forgot to run. <laughs> <laughs> That's one with the ball. You know? For you pitchers, I wish I was like that. When it takes the ball and it just moves. You see it move over that bat. You know what I'm talking about? I got a smile here. You know what I mean? But if you could do that every single, not game ladies, not any. Not happen with every single pitch. So what am I looking for? When you're on defense, are you moving faster to that ball than you did the last time you saw it off the barrel of that bat, even in shadow? Are you getting the ball over there to first base to get the out? Why? Because you got the talent. And you're showing it all. That's what I want. You want people to say, look at me. Look what God's given me. All right, here we go. Where are my instructors? Okay, somewhere you're gonna see my assistant coach Cassidy. She worked a lot with pitchers. She does pitching, she does recruiting. Um, she does conditioning. Yeah, she is, loves conditioning. Okay, here's my husband, Coach Pinto. All right, he's my second assistant as well. And he deals all this. <laughs> Coach Pinto deals with outfielders, catchers. He deals with life skills. We do have Bible studies and stuff that we love to have. 
Why? Because we're excited the Lord loves us. Okay? The other thing that he deals with is academics. He works very closely with Jess as well. Okay? Uh, also, we have our volunteer, assistant coach here, Sarah. Uh, Sarah does a lot with academics for the NCAA. Okay? And she has her office here, and she's right next to Jess. Then we have our graduate assistant in the second year, Morgan Price. Morgan played at App State. She's a catcher. She is amazing. I tell you what, her degree is sports management. She is awesome. How do you get jobs, ladies? Because you're awesome. An internship, or even as a player, whatever. Okay? We have Keely as our director of operations. What does she do? She makes sure the buses are there, she makes sure the planes know we're there, hotels, all that stuff, and much more. She works with 14. But we don't say right now. No, right now. Yes, yes. There's Coach Cassidy right here. Wave your hand. Even though she wasn't there. Give it up! <laughs> First of all, can you tell she's a pitcher? Yeah. <laughs> right? I love it. Uh, she pitched at FIU. She coached at a lot of few other schools before us. And I have to embarrass her a little bit. I don't think it's okay. But I met Paige when she was eight years old. Her dad, where is she? There we go. Coach John Cassidy right there will be a uh, future assistant coach when he retires. Okay. But he does a lot of instruction in Florida. He's pitching. He's phenomenal. John and my brother Mark started the Diamonds organization and called me and asked if they could be my name. So they started the Dots Diamonds. And the 10 and under team had a 7-year-old, an 8-year-old, a 9-year-old, maybe one or two kids. And they started working to see if the fundamentals that I've taught as we've been camp and clinics together through the years would make a difference in work on kids who've never played before. One year, just practicing, practicing, and the 1997 year they played, and guess what? They won a national championship. So what does that tell you, ladies? Fundamentals of the game. You master them. Mm -hmm. 